Welcome to the Prime Strength YouTube channel. As always, Brendan Teets, owner and head coach here at Prime Strength. Today, we got another training vlog for you guys. This is the fourth uh, training day in my four day micro cycle, meaning my weekly training split. I train four days a week currently. And uh, as always, we're gonna touch on a few topics today, including uh, movement preparation, which you're watching me get ready for some squats here. We're also gonna talk about uh, training fatigue management and acute fatigue management. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about getting more out of less volume. So so what I'm warming up here for are some long pause squats. And this day is a little interesting. I have a lot of different exercises I do, and I'll explain the method to the madness. But first off, talking about movement prep here, I'm doing some body weight deep squats with some thoracic rotation. So the thoracic rotation is really good for my rack position, meaning how I get the bar properly engaged on and, and racked onto my back for heavy low bar squats. And I'm also spending a lot of time getting as deep as I can with my body weight and an empty barbell. So I think a lot of people overcomplicate movement preparation. Admittedly, I've done this in the past and there's some even some videos on YouTube that I should really go back and kind of correct my stance on. These days I keep movement preparation pretty simple except for you know rare cases where you really need to do some fancy stuff. I basically try to spend time either doing the movement I'm preparing for with a lot of body weight and empty bar work. And then I also do some function work, uh, breaking down the functions of whatever exercises I'm gonna be performing. So in this case, I need some thoracic rotation to properly rack this low bar squat. So you saw me doing some rotations. You also see me doing some scapula work here in a second, which also, also helps with getting this bar secured on my back in the correct position. Now on this day, we had long pause squats. So two second pauses for seven reps at RP four to five. And we're gonna talk more about why I go so light on this day in a bit, but this is really my third squatting day of the week where I'm not prioritizing heavy loads. So this is two days before my heaviest squat day where I'm gonna go ape shit and try to throw a lot of load on the bar. So this day is meant to be lighter. And as I said, these are uh, the thoracic, uh, or excuse me, the scapula drills I was doing uh, with the body weight and barbell warm up. Um, so I'm really focused here on scapular retraction, as well as again, a little bit of rotation there. I also did some Ys at some point, and then I also internally rotated my grip at one point with these. So I'm, I'm just getting the scapula firing through retraction, which is really important for getting a proper shelf for my low bar squat. Anyone low bar squatting, this is a really good idea. And again, this is not complex. I'm basically just breaking down the function of what my back needs to do in a, a low bar squat to properly rack the barbell. And I'm trying to uh, just break it down into a simple exercise and get those shoulders warmed up. You can already see here, by the time I got to two plates, my scapula looks way better. Shoulders look way more stacked than in that warm up with the empty bar. Now, kind of skipping forward here, because guys, these were legit two second pauses. And that's what I wanna talk about is I'm doing this exercise, a lot of the reason for it is to reduce objective loading. So I don't need heavy weights here. If anything, I'm working on technique and feeling comfortable in the deepest end range position of my squat so I have great depth. And this day is meant to kind of prime and set up my coming heavy squat day in 48 hours. So this is exactly two days before I go really heavy on squats. And my top set here for the day was 315 pounds. So uh, really, really light for me. In fact, this is quite literally about 50% load of my one rep max on any given day. And I'm doing this for long pauses. Now, a lot of people might implement pause squats for different reasons. A one second pause at minimum is required in my opinion to get any kind of different adaptation stimulus than say doing like a quick half second pause like you see a lot of these guys on Instagram doing. Now, in the case of a two second pause, the goal there is usually load reduction, really uh, heavy focus on technique, and uh, just kind of getting comfortable in the end range or bottom position of the squat. I love this for people who deal with depth issues or early on in training cycles. Now, after that, I follow that up with some floor press here, specifically a close grip floor press, which is actually, in my opinion, more of a bodybuilding exercise than it is a powerlifting exercise, especially if you have long arms. For some of you stocky arm guys, it might not be quite the same, but notice the positioning of my scapula is nowhere near as retracted as my competition style bench press. Because of this, my pecs can actually enter end range maximal contraction a lot easier than they can in a regular competition style bench press. 
progress. Basically what I'm saying there in, in layman's terms is that my pecs can squeeze together at the top a lot better. You can actually see it through my shirt, my pecs contracting. And the floor press, especially a close grip one, still actually has a great range of motion while allowing you to get that ultimate pec contraction at the top. Um, this also, if done with a pause, how I'm pausing here, where I really mold the triceps into the ground and completely deload it, it helps a ton with explosiveness. You can actually see this first set. I was being a little tentative because it's been a while since I've done this movement. And this last rep here got, you know, hard enough to where I had to really like push through it a little bit. After that, I kind of got into a, a go mode here and started kind of manhandling the weight a little bit better. You'll see as this set goes on, the bar starts to actually move a little bit faster and I got into a good groove. I think the key when performing any exercise is starting lights if you're new to the exercise and mastering the movement and understanding the fundamentals of what you're trying to get out of this exercise. And if you have a coach, this is really what a coach is supposed to be helping you with. But anyway, so we had that floor press and then I basically just follow this day up with some light hypertrophy work. So this is a really non-invasive day. It's here for some squatting volume, light volume and technical practice. And then some, um, you know, pressing, which eventually will turn more into a competition style press day. But for now, we're easing into the, the training cycle. We got 12 weeks before the meet. So we're going to ease in with a floor press. And then after that, I'm following up with some dumbbell overhead press, seated dumbbell overhead press, going shirtless to, to show off the douchey gains. Uh, <laughs> you guys can see I'm just in love with my look right now. I really have leaned out the last few months, so it's really, really paid off. And I just have my shirt off, honestly, any chance I can, can take. It's perfectly aligned with summer. Uh, threw up the 80s here for a set of eight. Now, admittedly, because of the cut, I thought uh, I was going to do better there. But because I'm cutting down, my capacity is really low still. I have a few more pounds to go to be able to make weight. So uh, those 80s, I died out at rep eight, but I was supposed to do 10 to 12 reps. So I was going a little heavier than I should have. But it was by the time I got up to those 80s, I was just pretty gassed. That's the hardest thing I think about cutting right now is that my strength is actually doing okay. My pressing strength is down a little bit, but overall I feel decently strong, but my capacity for volume is pretty low still. So I'm actually trying to up my carbohydrates now that I'm transitioning more to volume. For you guys who've been following me, for a little bit you know i was doing a lot more intensity based training before this so switching it up to volume i'm able to eat a little bit more carbs and i'm hoping that's going to help out now besides the overhead press and the rows there that you guys saw me doing i got some uh, overhead dumbbell tricep extensions where i actually pronate near the top lockout of this and I go into a neutral grip position at the bottom stretch position. I'm also trying to actively contract my abs, hence why you can see the abs really popping through, to keep me out of extension a little bit in my T-spine here, which is actually gonna help with a little bit more tricep activation in this position, just due to the way the long head attaches onto the, the shoulder muscles. Um, I'm trying to actually get a better squeeze at the top, I guess you could say, by keeping my abs contracted. Because if that shoulder, uh, or excuse me, if the T-spine extends, that shoulder is going to um, get lengthened at that the shoulder joint a little too much. And I won't be able to squeeze that tricep as much. This is actually an exercise I saw Michael Hearn doing recently. And biomechanically, I agree with the ideas he was saying in the video to do this with. So I gave it a try. I'd never actually done this before, but I, I really like it. And from a, a standpoint of biomechanics, it makes a lot of sense. Um, after that, I just finished up with some curls and you guys will notice this workout's a little low volume and that's okay. Um, honestly, I think so many guys are obsessed with doing like 30 sets on arms per week. Right now I'm accumulating in total of my entire training week, about nine sets on my triceps and nine sets on my biceps. And that is plenty enough for stimulus. If you need more sets than that on your arms, you're severely under training or undershooting your RPEs. You guys should be pushing your isolation work to really high exertion levels and leaving it all out on the table. And you're only going to need for small muscle groups, maybe like eight to 12 sets a week. If you're needing more than that, I highly, highly doubt you're training that hard. And that was a point I really wanted to hammer home in today's video. Uh, that's pretty much everything though. Like, comment, subscribe. It really does help out with the algorithm down below. If you guys are interested in any of our programs, head over to prime-strength.com and I'll catch you guys in the next one.